tell me this is the Education Foundation, right? That's right, Douglas County Education Foundation. Okay. We serve the Douglas County School System. Mm -hmm. We have been around since 1993. Mm -hmm. This is our 25th year, and many people may know us as Public Education Trust. Okay. PET. PET, right, PET right. grants. I've heard of the PET Absolutely. grants. Absolutely. That was our name for the first almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. And our board just felt like Douglas County Education Foundation were clearly identified right. who we are and whom we serve. And that sounds pretty professional, too. I mean, that sounds yeah. upper crust stuff right there. Well, I actually had someone one time ask me if I raised money for animals. Right, yeah, pet. the pet grant, yeah. yeah. And then even if they knew if it, that it stood for Public Education Trust, that almost sounds like a federal level right, program. Right, right, right. So we want everyone to know that we serve our local school system. Uh -huh. Our donors are from this community. We feel like it gives us much more of the community feel that we are. Right. So we'll talk more about the foundation in just a little bit. Uh, this is Servings Kitchen with a Cause, and introduce yourself. My name is Lynn Murray. I am the Executive Director of the Douglas County Education Foundation. I've been on board four and a half years. Awesome. And what we also do here, we don't just talk about the uh, nonprofits and organizations that come on the show. We cook. I'm looking forward to and, that. And so, what are we cooking today? I don't know. I can't <laughs> wait. To, I can't wait to hear because I can't wait to see how you are tying this in. Yes, she has no idea what we're cooking. I want to peek. I want to peek. So, well, you're going to get to peek because I'm going to show you right now and see if you can guess what we're cooking. Well, let's see. I see salad and potatoes and lettuce and ham. I will say that this is probably one of the hardest things to guess because these recipes are sort of, they don't, they don't go together necessarily, but they are themed. Hmm. A little part of me is thinking sandwich because I see the mm -hmm. sandwich meat there. You have got that one, and right? Egg. Okay, sandwiches and salad and <laughs> I got her stumped. Devil got her stumped. But that's pretty good. You got you got one of them. We're actually doing a turkey and Swiss wrap for the holidays. Well, what we're gonna do since you guys are all about the education education foundation, um, you've got uh, during the week meals are difficult during school yes, for parents, they are. right? Especially breakfast. I mean, a lot of parents don't even want to get up and make breakfast. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, one of the other recipes is called a bird's nest breakfast cup. So what you do is you can prepare these, you can store them and heat them up in the morning. So Great. the recipe we're doing, we're actually cutting in half because it makes 24 cups. So we're just gonna make 12. So you can really plan ahead with these and, and uh, it's a very nutritious breakfast. It has almost everything you can think of as far as breakfast goes. Uh, and then the second thing we're going to do is a, it's called a playground granola bar. It's a great snack for after school. Kids get home, it's nutritious, it's filling, and it won't fill them up too much so that they don't eat dinner. And the turkey wrap we're going to be doing, it's sort of a, uh, you know, I know the school system encourages children to eat at school. Mm -hmm. It's very eat important. Eat school lunch, and right? Eat a healthy lunch. Sometimes, uh, you know, a, a child may have a special uh, diet or that type of thing. Or, like right now when we're filming, this is actually Thanksgiving break. Parents have to feed the kids for lunch. So this is a perfect item for kids. Uh, you skip the, the whole breads and you go to a tortilla, which it, hence a wrap, uh, and it makes it a little more nutritious. And what we're using is uh, a spinach wrap. You can't taste the spinach, but it kind of adds that extra little bit of uh, nutrition in there. Do I see And bacon? of course, oh, I see bacon. bacon. Two of the recipes have bacon. So I'm happy. So that's, that's gonna be some good stuff right there. So when we come back, we're gonna start with our uh, bird's nest breakfast cups. We'll be right back. Our first recipe is the bird's nest breakfast cups. We're gonna be cooking them in the muffin, I would say tin, but it's stoneware. So I, I know, guess that's serious. Really tin. That's, yes. Uh, and you can tell it's been used a little bit. So the first thing we have to do is make the crust. 
All right, so okay. what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add that whole bag of thawed hash browns. So we can pour that in here. We're gonna add the salt, the pepper, olive oil, and about a two, two thirds cup of shredded cheddar cheese. So I'll grab the shredded cheddar. And if you wanna just add a bit of a pinch of, a nice big size pinch of salt. Oh, this is the good coarse sea salt. Yes. Okay, just uh, about that much. Maybe one more of those. Okay. Perfect. And that's about a third of a cup. And that's about two thirds of a cup. That's the man's way of you measuring, know, I mean, right? There we go. And we women get the cup out and we measure it exactly <laughs> right. You know, and, and it's less dishes you have to wash, too. You've got, cups, so. You've got a point there. you got a point there. I'm going to add a decent amount of pepper. And we need, with the olive oil, we need two and a half tablespoons, so I'm actually going to measure that. I'm surprised. <laughs> With oil, I, you know, you can you can make it a little too wet and you don't want it to be too dry either, so try to go with what they're asking for here. And then about a half of that. Awesome. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna mix this up with my hands. I just washed them. Just kinda incorporate everything. And... Where do you get your recipes? Um, online. I've got, I think I said this the last time we filmed, I should say it every single time, you have to get the app, Paprika. I'll have paprika. to remember that, okay. So if you cook or you have recipe, you know, you got those recipe pieces of paper flying around everywhere, you put it into the app, and then when you're ready to make that recipe, you can just hit a button that says add the ingredients to a shopping list. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And then, you know, if you've already got some of the ingredients, you just uncheck it and it won't put it on the list. Um, but you can go online inside the app and search for recipes and you hit save and it creates the recipe. I'll download it. Yeah, it's really great. So that's what I use. Now we do use a grocery app and that way all of us in the family can add things that we need. That's a good idea. So what we're going to do is divide this into equal portions uh, into the muffin cups. I just got a pressure cooker not long ago, and I don't know what I'd do without going online, because I don't know how long to cook anything without <laughs> yeah. looking it up. Yeah, that is one of my next purchases for the kitchen, is going to be one of those multi-use, it's like a pressure cooker, oh, yeah. fryer, you can, Yes, you, know, you can saute, fryer. you can slow cook, yes. you can do it all. It really is handy. We're doing a great job. And I mean, then you can was... just put the, the you know, the, the bowl right in the refrigerator. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is kind of press it down into the, the cup hole and then create a little bit of a well in the middle, kind of like this. For our nest. Right. So we'll pre-bake this in a 425 oven for about 15 minutes. And then it will be the, you kind of have to cook the, the potatoes more than you do the eggs. That's why you do this first. The olive oil smells good. Oh yeah. Olive oil is a staple in our kitchen. We, we go through it pretty quick. This is great. So once we put this in the oven, uh, we'll take a short break and prepare for our second recipe, which will be the granola bars. The gr Once these go back in the oven with the egg mixture, it'll be the same oven temperature as what the granola bars will need to be cooked on. Have you so, done a test run? I have not. Oh. This is all flying by the seat of my pants here. So we'll see how it goes together, right? All right, so those are ready and uh, get these in the oven for about 15 minutes. And when we come back, we'll get the granola bars going and talk about the Education Foundation. Let's do it. Before we start the granola, uh, 
why don't you tell us a little bit about the foundation itself and, and what you, what exactly you guys do for, for the education system in Douglas County? I'd be happy to, TJ. We raise money, most of it locally. A few regional foundations support us, but most of it comes from local businesses and individuals, mm -hmm. including very generous school system staff. Mm -hmm. And we award it back to teachers and students in the school system. Okay. One of our big programs is, of course, scholarships for the graduating seniors. Mm -hmm. I think most everybody understands the value of scholarships, <laughs> yes. and I don't need to share Absolutely. too much about that. But another important program is classroom impact grants for teachers. Okay. And I had someone, um, when I was asking if they would be interested in supporting classroom impact grants, say, I'm not paying for school supplies. Right. That needs to be funded by the district and parents. Right. Classroom impact grants do not fund school supplies. It's so much more. Many of the applications, their requests completely ties into their school's improvement plan. Okay. The schools identify what they need to work on mm -hmm. and these grants help them work mm -hmm. on those areas. So this is kind of over and above the stuff that Absolutely. they would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. It may be items, mm -hmm. but it's right. not scissors right. and tape and things of that nature. Right. It's nothing like that. Um, we fund technology. We have many students who um, are speech impaired or have no mm -hmm. speech at all. Right. We've provided technology, iPads, things of that nature that also helps sight impaired students, mm -hmm. hearing impaired students, mm -hmm. orthopedic impaired students. You know, they could do so much with devices that you can just swipe. Right. So th those are critical within our classrooms for many students. Mm -hmm. We have funded playground equipment mm -hmm. for children with physical challenges. Mm -hmm. We had a, um, a student, a young man, who would go out and have to be in his wheelchair dur during recess. Mm -hmm. So we got a swing for him. Awesome. And sometimes I think the teachers would go down a slide with them, but you know, there's a risk there of, right. of hurting a leg. Right. I've, I've heard adults should never go down slides holding their children. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to put anyone at risk there. Right. So we were able to fund some equipment that this student and other students in similar circumstances could use. Mm -hmm. So we do really, really, as I say, meaty projects, right. Right. not just, um, not just you know, your everyday supplies or anything like that. Not that those aren't important either. Yeah, and, and you know, I was in the school system for four years, and back then they were called pet grants because mm -hmm. it was the, the pet, uh, it's called pet back then. But um, the teachers sort of who are, who are on, you know, they're the boots on the ground. They see a, a need, and it may be something that they obviously can't, fund out of their own money or, or the school can't afford so they fill out the application and submit for one of these grants right and then if they're awarded the grant it that money is going directly to an actual need absolutely and, and absolutely. like you said it's all local so if, if you're watching this and and you wind up donating your money is going to our school system right Right, and sometimes I think teachers know better than anyone else right. what their students need to um, come up to grade level and stay there, stay there, or if they're the brightest kids, to keep them challenged and mm -hmm. motivated. Mm -hmm. You've got to work with students at all ends of the spectrum, right. and these classroom impact grants help in those areas. Mm -hmm. We've also funded, um, <clears throat> just recently, several sensory rooms, primarily mm -hmm. for students with autism. Right. If they're unable to stay in a classroom, they can go into a sensory room mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, pull themselves together right. so that they're then ready to go back in the classroom because mm -hmm. you want education to be as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. And a student who's not in the classroom isn't learning. Right. So sensory rooms are very important now, and we've been able to equip some of those. Mm -hmm. I would imagine the, the types of things that, that these grants go to range all over the place. They do. I mean, they do. I, I, we actually filmed um, the awards presentation for some of the grants at one point. And, yes, we're and, glad to have you with us. Yeah, and it's just amazing some of the ideas that the teachers come up with. Absolutely. And, and they just sound really cool. And I, I wanted to go to the classroom and participate in some of them. I know, and the teachers are so passionate. As I say to a lot of people, 
the teachers who ask for these grants mm -hmm. are going above and beyond already because right. uh, they've got to write the grant, they've got to get a budget, absolutely, at, and then they've got to implement it, they've got mm -hmm. to evaluate it when it's over. So it's really adding a lot of work to them when they are already overworked on, in many cases. Right. And they're just so passionate though when we have gone to their schools to notify them. Mm -hmm. Some of them have almost been teary, yeah. we've gotten hugs. You would think that they were getting the money personally. Right, That's right. how much they care about their students That's and great. seeing them perform. That's great. Well, yes. we'll talk a little bit more about that and also how these grants are funded in just a little bit, so okay. please stay with us because you can help. Now what yes, we're going to do right now is we're going to start these granola bars. Uh, we're going to start with mixing together in a large bowl, so I'll grab that in just a second. We're going to mix the oats, the brown sugar, uh, the cinnamon, flour, and salt. Uh, and then we're going to make a, a little well in the center. And we're going to add to that the honey, egg, oil, and vanilla. I love all of these ingredients. So it's going to yes. be great. Brown Amazing. Sugar. I'm going to grab a oats bowl. And cinnamon and honey. It's going to be good. And flour, all right. almost said sugar. <laughs> all right, so I will measure out the oats, if you will. Uh, we will need, uh, let's see, three quarters of a cup of uh, brown sugar. So there's a half right there. Probably easier to work with a smaller one with the brown sugar. And it says pack, so pack it on in there. All right. Yeah, we don't want to skimp on brown sugar, do we? We'll do about two and a half cups of the rolled oats. And I learned yesterday that rolled oats is basically just old fashioned oats. So if you go out to get rolled. Are we ready? Yes, throw it on in there. If you actually buy rolled oats, they're way more expensive than the ones that say old fashioned oats. So there's a little tip for you. You got a half cup or you want me to just, uh, uh, what am I doing? You can just eyeball it. How much am I doing this time? A half of Oh, half, uh, okay, that. I forgot what you told me. Yeah, so it's uh, three quarters of a cup. And then cinnamon. And we need three quarter teaspoon at these random amounts. So, and you know the difference between three quarters of a teaspoon and a teaspoon is really not that much. So, we can just do a teaspoon of, of cinnamon. Okay, you want me to dip it in there or pour? Yeah, however okay. you want to do it. Let's see if it'll go in there. Yes, it will. Yes. We got flour. That's going to be a cup of flour. Okay, that's all about right. Yes. Okay. Oh, I love the smell of cinnamon. It already looks beautiful and smells mm. great. Yes. Need a cup of this flour. So I understand you do most of the cooking in your household. I do. I love to cook. Uh, I love to experiment and do new recipes. Um, a lot of the presents that I get around Christmas or Father's Day or whatever are, are, you know, to be sexist, they're more like what, like my mom got and my sister. <laughs> um, but I love it. It's, it's you know, it's like having great. tools, you know, these yeah. cool gadgets and it's, you know, you're building stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. I love cooking. That's great. All right, so we can mix that up. I'll let you mix okay. that. My spatulas plastic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my, my 22 year old daughter posted a picture the other day on, on Facebook. Um, she's, she has her own house now. She has a uh, fiance, so she's becoming an adult. <laughs> and the, the picture said, you know you're becoming an adult when you have a favorite, favorite spatula. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that. I can relate. And when you when you realize that the plastic measuring cup's just no good, yeah, you know, exactly. you gotta have a you gotta upgrade like a, that little brown sugar a little bit. Have you been um, watching all the the funny things going around Facebook and other memes about the big question a lot of millennials are asking their parents, how do you cook the twenty five pound turkey yeah. in a microwave? Just yes. as a joke. 
hilarious. I've, I've, I've Parents heard of are, are having heart attacks and strokes over all that. And, and I heard of one where the mother bought in and she went online to look it up and screenshot and sent her, her daughter a few different things that she'd found. Ridiculous. Okay, okay. That, that looks pretty there. good. Um, if you'll make a well in the center. Kind of like our bird's nest yep, exactly. um, breakfast item. I'm grabbing another bowl so that we can mix up an egg or beat an egg. So while I'm beating up this egg, we're going to add the honey. So it's going to be a half cup. Let's see, probably be easier to do. To do, do my, to do my, there? um, I have the, yes. um, I have the, Yes, I have the half cup. Perfect. So half cup of honey? Half a cup of honey. This is going to be delicious. Yes. You Sounds know, I've, read, I've like heard that honey is the one food that never, ever goes bad. You are exactly right. I usually throw that bit of trivia out whenever I I'm using honey. I beat you to it today, didn't I? <laughs> I'm going to let these go about another minute or so. They're almost ready. Got our egg beat up. Then you got your pan nicely oiled. Yep. It's all ready to go. So we can pour the honey in there. The egg Just in there. Just in the well? Yep. Honey in the well. Honey in the well. Honey in the hole. And you can use the spatula to kind of pull some of that out of there if it's not all coming out. I need a half a cup of vegetable oil. So when you finish that, just fill that up with vegetable oil and pour that in. And then I am going to do the vanilla extract, which is two teaspoons. So I'm gonna get the teaspoon and see if I Oops, can. excuse me. Sorry. A half a cup? One teaspoon, two teaspoons. In the well? Yep. And then if you'll use the spatula to kind of incorporate everything. I'm gonna get these breakfast cups out of here. How do they look? They look undercooked mm. right now, <laughs> which they should because they're gonna go back in with the egg mixture in a bit. I have set the oven to 350 now. It's going from 425 to 350 because the egg mixture in the cups cooks at 350 and uh, conveniently enough, so do the granola bars. Are we maintaining our bird's nest or we're incorporating you can everything incorporate now? Okay, we're pulling everything. it all in yep. now, okay. Oh, this looks good. Yes. One thing you can do if, is, is let your kids help, too, because the directions actually say to use your hands. That might be something fun for the kids to do. Oh, yeah. They'd love Spatula all that sticky works too. with honey, wouldn't yes. they? <laughs> and then send them outside to play in the leaves. <laughs> so that's going to go in our 9 by 13 inch pan, and okay. it's going to cook at 350 for about 35 minutes, 30 to 35. So what's gonna happen is we'll put the pan in the oven. It'll have some cooking time going on. We will, while we're here, we're gonna get our uh, breakfast cups completed, get the egg mixture in. It'll go back in the oven for about 20 minutes. Who needs to buy a box of granola bars when exactly. we can make our own, right? So easy, and the ingredients are relatively cheap. You're not, not using a lot of honey. That's probably the most expensive one. That's going to be spread very thin. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. But it'll cook really quickly. Yes. Once again, you've got a nice heavy pan here. Yeah. And like you said, we've got it nice and greased, so these will come out easily. And the directions do say to uh, cut the bars while they're still warm because once they cool off, they set and it's a little difficult to cut. So we'll be cutting these shortly after they come out of the oven. So that's the opposite of what we're us usually doing, right, isn't right. it? Right, right. 
So they, they uh, specifically mention that. That looks fantastic. And have you given these a test run? Yes. You have given these a test run before? Uh, I've done some similar, but not this exact recipe. Okay. That's perfect. That looks great. All right, so I'm gonna get these in the oven and then we can get ready to fill our bird's nests with the egg mixture. We'll be right back. We have got our eggs ready to make our egg mixture to go into our breakfast cups. So we're gonna, cr I'll crack, I'll crack the eggs and get a little <laughs> dirty. We'll do six okay. eggs and uh, I've got a tablespoon of water in here already. That's what the recipe calls for. Thank you. Now, I love using the brown eggs, but the shells wind up getting in a little easier with oh, brown do they? eggs. I don't know what it is, hmm. but. Is it just more fragile? I haven't yeah. I used brown eggs much. I don't know why. Why do you like brown eggs better? Um, they are organic, uh, cage-free. The cage-free ones are the brown ones, typically. So that's what we go with. That's a good reason. Yeah. Try to be at least a little humane, even though we're eating them anyway. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it's not a good future. All right, so get that beat up. If you'll add just a pinch of salt. I will. And a little bit of black pepper in here. Perfect. Think that's good on salt? Yep. Awesome. Awesome, meaning that's enough stop, right? Uh, awesome, <laughs> you did a fantastic job pouring that in there. It's a perfect amount. I love some black pepper. All right, I'm gonna get, this is a little thing I like to do when I am pouring pancake batter or eggs or something like that. I will put it into the measuring cup and use it to pour. Oh, to make it much easier to pour. Yes, Great idea. All right, I'm gonna grab this hot pan over here. And we're gonna try to put equal amounts in each one. So I'll do my six. Okay, I love your work table. You don't have to worry about a hot pan, do you? Nope. It's beautiful and very functional. Worst case scenario is I just crack some more eggs and we add some more. That's a easy solvable problem. Yeah. And then with each one, we're gonna add a little pinch of shredded cheese. Ah, we might have to crack some more eggs. Yeah. Throw that over here. Let me try one of these brown egg sets. <laughs> I may regret that. How many you think we need? A couple? Uh, yeah, I think a couple might get the job done. So each one will get some cheese and some bacon. Looking good already. Yes. We get to eat this when it's done, right? Absolutely. That's the only reason why I started doing this show, just to eat. And I guess advertise it, for the nonprofits, you know. Well, thanks for throwing that in there. I'm gonna reach right <laughs> over here and get the spatula, yes. okay? Or the whisk. Just eggs, salt, and pepper. Yes, Right, ma nothing more? Yes. I'm not, um, I don't cook too much right now just, just because of you know, jobs, kids, that sort of thing. But I have right. some friends that are real foodies. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna find it hilarious you. that I'm doing a cooking <laughs> show. And they know who they are. They're, I know they're laughing right now if they, <laughs> if they see this. Almost finished. These will go back in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes and will be coming out about the same time as the, uh, the granola bars. 
And while the rest of these, all of these are cooking, when we come back, we're gonna start the turkey wraps. Okay. By the time we're done with the turkey wraps, everything's gonna be ready. Great. We can eat. Great, Can't just wait. in time for lunch, right? Yes. It's wonderful. We're ready to do these uh, turkey wraps, and I'm gonna start working on it. Uh, I'm gonna add some cream cheese mm -hmm. that's got chives in it with some Dijon mustard. That's gonna be our spread. We have thin sliced oven roasted turkey, lunch meat. We've got diced tomatoes, avocado, shredded lettuce, bacon, and then some shredded Swiss. Those fresh vegetables look very good. Yes, and see this is a lot of variety going on one sandwich. So it's gonna be great for kids, you know, get their vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing that, if you will, tell us more about the foundation and how you guys actually get the money to pay out these scholarships. Sure. How does that work? Absolutely. Well, we, um, we have a number of different fundraisers. That's uh, one of our main ways of getting money. We have the annual fun run. We just had it on November the 3rd. It was our seventh annual foundation fun run. Mm -hmm. We had almost 400 kids come out and run and then hundreds of parents and school personnel joined us throughout the morning. Awesome. And we get sponsors for that event and of course the race fees. and. Mm -hmm. That's um, been very good for us, a very good source of funds. Where's that held? New Manchester High School. Okay. They have a wonderful track yes, and wonderful they do. facility. Great source there of funds for the classroom impact grants that mm -hmm. we talked about a little bit earlier. A new fundraiser that we had this year took place on the same day. It was a very, very busy day for me. Oh, wow. That was the Superintendent's that. Gala. <laughs> that took place that evening, and it was a wonderful event. We I had, heard that was a great success. <clears throat> it was a wonderful event. We, I think everyone had a good time. It was nice to dress up. It was the Great Gatsby theme. A lot of people awesome. just wore their formal wear and right. some dressed for the theme. And that was raising money for our special education department. Okay. We want to have more out of classroom experiences for special education students. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those aren't funded at the level they need. These are students that we're trying to build independence and get, help them gain confidence. Mm -hmm. They may take public transportation to the mall and order a meal. Mm -hmm. Things that as they become adults, they need to be able to do and do comfortably. Right. They may go bowling, not so much, or not only for the fun of bowling, but to mm -hmm. learn how to, to rent the shoes, to right. pay for the lanes, right. that sort of thing. They often go to restaurants. Again, it's not so much about eating out at a restaurant. It's learning how to take the transportation to the restaurant, how to order. Mm -hmm. So these are experiences that we do need supplemental funds for. And the gala was a wonderful start there. That's an area of particular passion for Superintendent Trent North. Mm -hmm. he, he's the one that selected the, um, the area that we wanted those proceeds to go to. Uh -huh. And we're grateful to all of our sponsors and to everyone who bought a ticket and joined us. And we've already got the date set for next year. It's going to be November the 2nd, 2019. Awesome. The second annual superintendent scale. You will see me there. Good. I couldn't go this year because I was out of town, but Good. next year I'm in. How about the fun run? You want to show up there too? Or that's not quite as fun to A you? fun walk, maybe. <laughs> I hear you about <laughs> Leisurely. the fun walk. <laughs> we also um, have a staff campaign that kicked off on Tuesday, November the 6th. And that's a concentrated, very formal co campaign with all of our faculty and staff. And you know they already do a lot. So when they then return money to the foundation, I think it just says so much. And we right. had well over $20,000, $21,000 last year from our faculty and staff, and that That's was our amazing. second campaign. That's this awesome. year is our third, and we have joined in with communities and schools this okay. year, another great not-for-profit that serves Who's our school system. Who's been on this show. Yes, yes, I'm sure you've had Mitzi, Mitzi Teal. Teal. Yes. Absolutely. We're happy to partner with them, two great organizations serving our school system. And that we have Kaleidoscope. That's a fourth event that we offer. That's a community musical. This past year, May was our first one that we hosted. Uh -huh. And we had musical talent from the five high schools. And they are 
phenomenal. Yeah. Each school did something different. New Manchester brought their acapella group. Uh, they are oh, unbelievable. They were well. It was such a good mix. Yeah. Some schools did a few numbers from their musicals. Uh -huh. Some did the show choir. So it was a wonderful mix of great musical talent. Did a little bit of everything. Absolutely, and the foundation split the proceeds there with the high schools that participated because they travel so much and um, go to so many community events and are wonderful ambassadors of their schools and the school system. Uh -huh. But it takes money to get there, you know, to buy yeah. their costumes, to buy their music, yeah. to buy their instruments, and to travel. So we were happy to share proceeds with them. And the date's already set for the second kaleidoscope. It's going to be April 16th okay. at Douglas County High School. You better be putting these dates on your calendar. Yes, by the way. please put them on your calendar. We depend on our community. We also have local businesses who support us and um, a number of individuals and a few regional foundations who are committed to education. Uh -huh. The John and Mary Franklin Foundation has been very good to us. Public supermarkets, charities. Okay. Publix is a very, very generous organization nationwide, Wells Fargo. So other than those, most of our support is from home. We receive support from home and we uh, uh -huh. give back home. These are looking good, by the way. Yeah, this is uh, it's actually kind of fun to do, too. Looking very healthy. All right, I've got the, uh, the cream cheese Dijon mustard spread, lettuce, tomato, avocado and the last step will be the the meats i've got the turkey and i've got some bacon crumbles that'll go it's on there as well it's gonna be good it's gonna be good and tell me about how you know like scholarships i'm fortunate enough to be uh, a diplomat with the chamber of commerce as well as you mm -hmm. it's a great uh, chamber and the other day you were talking about the scholarships and and one of the questions you asked to us was how much do you think it would cost to start a scholarship? Right, right. And I think most people think that to start a scholarship, you have to have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars and mm -hmm. create that endowment. And then the scholarships are awarded each year from interest earnings only. Okay. Well, that is ideal because right. as we like to say, the the endowment then exists in perpetuity, serving right. generations of students. Right. But with interest rates so low right now, we're really not even pushing endowments. Mm -hmm. We're looking for annual support. And a lot of people don't realize this, but for as little as $500, you could name a scholarship or a classroom impact grant. That is And when I say name very it. Very affordable. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it's tax deductible, 100% uh -huh. tax deductible. So it's a wonderful deal. We're coming up on the holiday season. Who's got parents that need nothing? Right. My mother's already told me, I don't need a thing. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to give her something. Yeah, I can't right. not do it. Yeah. <laughs> so scholarship is a wonderful way to honor someone, to remember someone, to do it as a memorial one, or mm -hmm. to put a business name or an organization name It's a, right. if it's a club or something. And for $500 annually, you can do that. And Scholarships, of course, are what most people think about, but you can name a classroom impact grant if you mm -hmm. have a passion for helping those teachers help their students. Mm -hmm. A five hundred dollar or a thousand dollar right named classroom impact grant. That's awesome. Is a wonderful way to serve. That is a great uh, idea for a Christmas gift. Absolutely, and if someone does it, I would, I could write the letter to the honoree and say in your honor, so and so has made a gift to the foundation. That's awesome. And if uh, if you um, love journalism. If it was mm -hmm. done in your honor, you might want the, if it's a scholarship, you might mm -hmm. want the scholarship recipients to be majoring in journalism yeah. or engineering. We so can you can kinda, cater it. We to, can tailor it right. right to the one that's being honored. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so I um, I hope folks will reach out to me. Yeah. It's well, great. see, there you go. How do they get in touch with you? Well, you can call me at the school system or my email is so easy, lynn.murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, at dcssga.org. Think Douglas County School System. Yeah. dcssga.org or go to our our website which is dcef.org.
dcssga.org. And that's all down here, so you can just write it down. Good. I'll keep it up yes. for just a second, so you can get a piece of paper and a pencil or just type it into your cell phone. And you know, we're talking about holiday gifts. I have um, someone, she's actually on my board. I have a wonderful group of volunteer mm -hmm. board members. She is part of a lunch group and these ladies get together and they go to lunch and they shop and they do all kinds of fun. I think they travel right. throughout the year and at Christmas, rather than giving each other gifts, they make an honorary gift to a favorite charity. That's awesome. And one of these just gave me a check and she, then she gave me her friends' names and address. And uh -huh. next month, I'll write them and say, in your honor, so-and-so has made this gift. That's great. Yeah, Such so it's gifts idea. that keep on giving. Right. The, the, actually, if, if that phrase could ever be applied to anything, that's that's. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And on occasion, when someone has lost a loved one, they have had memorial gifts mm -hmm. come to the foundation. Yeah. You know, flowers are gonna fade. Right. But an education lasts a lifetime. Yeah. So it's something that just, you can't, you can't lose with it. No. Tax deduction, you honor or remember someone, and you help those who need helping. That is great. That is great. Mm -hmm. So I think we're about they ready to good. eat. We're going to roll these up, cut them in half. I'm about to get the uh, food out of the oven. When we come back, we're going to have a great spread here. We're going to be ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Me I'm ready. Too. We'll be right back. What do you think? It looks great. It looks appealing. It's attractive. It's healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired. Awesome. Now, they wouldn't necessarily go together. I mean, this is not exactly like a meal you would have to serve all these dishes together, but it's an example of things that you can do that aren't that hard to do uh, and will last a little bit. You could do it on the weekend and then you have them for later on. Why? The wraps store pretty well because it's not bread, like, you know, fluffy bread mm -hmm. that would get kind of soggy in the refrigerator mm -hmm. or might just, it just doesn't last very well. It could be wrapped up individually for school right. lunches because exactly. they're snacks. Exactly. Or my lunch. So let's take a taste. Which one do you want to taste first? I guess the sandwich. Let's do it. Let's do it. The wrap. All right, it's nice and pretty. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the, the Dijon mm -hmm. mixed in. That, that's delicious. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love Swiss on a sandwich, so you got that. The Dijon and the uh, cream cheese with chives. Really good, really good spread. Absolutely. So that's success, I would say. I would say that's success. What do you want next? Do you want to save the the uh, granola for the for the last? Can I treat that like our dessert? Our yeah. Dessert? Yeah, let's try the... Uh, the bird's the nest. The bird's nest. That's pretty good too. That is good. Still warm, straight from the oven. It's like a uh, all the breakfast foods you would have on your plate at Waffle House all together mm -hmm. in one bite. The 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 potatoes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Cheese, bacon, eggs. I'm going for another bite. That's so good. <laughs> I'll have to make those again at this house. I think I'll be making them at my house. All right. So last but not least. We got the uh, granola, the playground granola bar, still warm as well. Once they cool off, they will harden a little bit. Right now, they're nice and gooey. Oh, it's great. Oh, wow. It's great. We saved the best for last, I mm -hmm. think. I mean, you need to make these for a holiday meal I'm going to this weekend. Yes. I mean, this could actually be a dessert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. It was so good. easy to make. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, I think the granola bars were easier than the turkey wraps, and we didn't have to cook anything with the turkey wrap. Yeah, just throw a few things in, stir them up, and... Yeah, put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. So I would say all three are at success. You should try these at home. What you should also do is donate in Please. some way to the Education Foundation. Absolutely. Again, tell us how they can get in touch with you to donate. Email or... 
website, lynn.murray at dcssga.org, and the website is dcef.dcssga.org. And it's down here, right? Like yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's down here. And like us on Facebook. I promise we won't flood feeds with too much information, but you can see the types of things we do for our schools. I'm just grateful to our community, and thank you for letting me come on and share a little bit about the foundation. Absolutely, thank you for coming on, and thank you for what you do for our kids and our school system. My pleasure. Uh, you're a great advocate for, for what you do. You don't just do it, you also get out and talk about it and get people to get involved. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, yes. everybody. And we will see you next month on Servings Kitchen with a Cause.